Throughout history, the sport of racing and watches have gone hand in hand. Motorsports have always been dependent on highly accurate timekeeping, and at one point, sport and racing chronographs were vital in recording lap times. While this is obviously no longer the case, the style of watch has become emblematic of an era when the sport of racing was at its peak. Since then, two brands have been closely intertwined with the automotive industry, Rolex and Tag Heuer. Rolex got into the game early in the mid-1930s when famed racer Sir Malcolm Campbell set a new land speed record in 1935 wearing an Oyster Perpetual. Then Hoyer came onto the scene later in the mid-century with its dashboard chronographs and later transitioned to wristwatches. So if you were to add a racing watch to your collection, which would it be? The two models share a number of similarities and some differences, namely the price, but we're gonna break down everything you need to know about splurging on a Daytona and getting a Carrera for a steal. In 1963, Rolex and Hoyer debuted both the Daytona and the Carrera. The Daytona was created shortly after Rolex started its partnership of the 24 Hours of Daytona race, later renamed the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Within the same year, the Carrera was born after Hoyer was inspired by Mexican racing legends Ricardo and Pedro Rodriguez. If only Crown and Caliber had been around in the 60s. I can just imagine the excitement in the watch community when both of these models were released. Of course, both models saw success immediately, and to this day they are sought after in both the new and pre-owned markets. First up, the Splurge, the Rolex Daytona. Though the Daytona line launched in 1963, it wasn't until 1965 that the Daytona name actually appeared on the dial. For two years, the collection was simply the Cosmograph. The first Cosmograph reference, 6239, introduced a number of firsts for Rolex. One of the most notable is the now iconic Panda dial. It showcased contrasting black subdials against a white dial. And it was also the first model with a tachometer scale engraved on the bezel instead of printed on the dial. The most iconic versions of the Panda dial are affectionately known as the Paul Newman Daytona because they were worn by the star. Instantly recognizable for its quirky Art Deco designs, this model is a true icon. And without Paul Newman, it's hard to know where it would be today. Over the next couple of decades, there were multiple references of the Daytona. Panda dials, reverse panda dials, steel bezels, acrylic bezels, screw down pushers, and even an updated Valjoux movement with a higher beat rate. Then in 1988, the most important update to the Daytona came in the form of the movement. The earlier models came equipped with a manual wound Valjoux chronograph. However, with the development of the automatic chronograph in 1969, Rolex knew they needed to update the Daytona. Zenith, one of the first creators of the automatic chronograph, approached Rolex, and it took nearly a decade of development, along with hundreds of modifications, before the Zenith El Primero movement was up to the standards. Eventually, Zenith presented a design Rolex deemed worthy for the Daytona. The El Primero movement for Rolex was extremely modified. From removing the date to lowering the beat rate from 36,000 to 28,800 beats per hour, it felt like a whole new movement. By the new millennium, the Daytona received another mechanical improvement. Rolex was beginning to upgrade all of its models with in-house movements. And then in 2000, they released a new Daytona series featuring their own in-house caliber 4130. The Daytona was quite the machine, but had lost some of its heritage, visually speaking. And then in 2016, the Daytona got back to its roots. The use of ceramic allowed for an all-black bezel and more traditional contrasting subdials. And even though it was more of a makeover than a new watch, this was the Daytona people had been waiting for. It still has the same 40 millimeter 904L stainless steel case, oyster bracelet, and ever reliable 4130 caliber with a 70 hour power reserve. After nearly six decades, the Daytona still reigns supreme in the world of chronographs. Next up, the steel, the Tag Heuer Carrera. The origins of the Carrera are inextricably linked with one man, Jack Hoyer. Jack is the great grandson of the brand's founder, Edward Hoyer, and he had just taken over the company in 1962 and spurred the creation of the Carrera, beginning with the reference 2447. Early Carreras featured a completely uniform dial as opposed to one with contrasting chronograph registers. In addition, they housed a Valjoux 72 movement just like the first Daytonas. The Carrera remained one of the most popular models in the brand's catalog for two decades. Then its fate began to shift. Jack Hoyer retired in 1982, and with him, the Carrera. Three years later, in 1985, another big transition came for the Hoyer brand. Techniques d'avant-garde acquired them, and they officially became Tag Hoyer. 
Instead of seeking to overhaul the company, the new leadership wanted to do just the opposite. They focused on heritage and tradition. They wanted to get back to Hoyer's roots and bring back the Carrera. Now, Tag Hoyer couldn't bring themselves to revive the Carrera in earnest without the man who'd brought it to life. So they approached Jack Hoyer about returning to relaunch the model, and he graciously agreed, and in 1996, the Carrera was reborn. The initial reissue lacked any major aesthetic updates. The brand wanted to make the model as close to the original as possible, from the dial layout to the old Hoyer logo. However, it did receive an upgrade under the hood. The new Carrera now came equipped with a Lamania 1873 hand-wound caliber. Soon after, Tag Hoyer updated the Carrera with an automatic chronograph movement from ETA. Still, it wouldn't be until 2009 that the brand would introduce their first in-house caliber to the Carrera collection. And not without controversy either. The term in-house may have been a little skewed, but nevertheless, the caliber 1887 is a great tribute to the Carrera. Here we have the Carrera caliber 1887. This is a 41 millimeter watch with the classic angular lugs of the Carrera. It has the Tag Heuer caliber 1887 with a 50 hour power reserve. The dial is a clean and great modern interpretation of the original, but the use of high polish on all the indices makes the watch a little shiny. Luckily, the inner chapter ring tachometer stays true to the Carrera line. So, which to choose? When it comes to choosing between the Daytona and the Carrera, the biggest difference is certainly the price. Both models have a very similar aesthetic that stays true to the quintessential sport and racing chronograph. Both brands also offer the models in a wide array of metals and style options. The Rolex Daytona is truly in-house and represents some of the premier watch technology in the industry. While the 1887 is a good column wheel chronograph, it does lack the panache of the Rolex. At the end of the day, both the Daytona and the Carrera stay true to their brand's DNA. If you want the racing chronograph, then it's got to be the Daytona. But the Carrera is an affordable modern day chronograph with a great history. If you enjoyed content like this, subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.